everyone thank you for joining me now today would you like to learn a new stamping technique this is something I've been doing for quite a while and it was actually something that I discovered by accident so I was stamping with distress inks onto some paper some watercolor paper cardstock and I didn't realize the paper was damp just a little bit just a little bit wet and um, it did cause this effect which actually looked fantastic in the end so I now do it on purpose and in a lot of my projects and I'd like to show you how to do it but I'm also going to show you afterwards a different uh, variation of this as well to give you another a really beautiful actual vintage look so stay tuned for that so just as an example I'm going to be using this beautiful large word background so this is my um, texture snow flurry stamp um, so it's one large stamp with all these words in and I'm going on to, and this is really important, I'm going on to watercolour cardstock. I'm not going on to any other sort of stamping paper or anything like that. It needs to be watercolour and I would definitely suggest the um, the better quality water paper, or water, sorry, watercolour paper, uh, the better the result. So you can see my stamp wasn't perfectly clean, that doesn't matter. So the first thing we're going to do is spritz with some water our paper now it doesn't matter that i've got my sticky mat on my platform here to hold my paper still rather than my magnets because uh, once this dries the stickiness will come back around there anyway so i'm also now going to apply some distress inks now as you probably all know from my channel i do a lot with distress oxides i've got my color combination videos all going up um alphabetical order for each color i've got lots of other tips and techniques using distress oxides but i still do love my inks and i do think for this particular technique inks are better than oxides that's because we've got the dye base in them um, and that does sort of spread a little bit better than the oxides do where the pigment sits on top you can still do this if you've got oxide so don't worry about that now i'm going for two tone here not for any reason besides the fact it looks pretty and i'm just inking up my stamp now now, as you know, with um, Distress Inks, if you've ever tried to stamp a large area with them before, you do often get a little bit of pooling on the surface. You can probably see that just here. Um, so that's fine. It doesn't matter for this particular technique. So now that has had time to soak in, I'm going to give that another light spritz of water so that I've actually got some water on the surface. And I'm going to press my stamp into that wet cardstock and hopefully you can see there as I'm pressing down over and over again you can see that's really quite a wet ink under there now holding that into the paper for a little while so what I can see happening and I'm wondering if I can just hold this up for you and show you if we look at the base of the T here can you see that color starting to wick outwards um, and that will be happening all over the image so I'm just going to hold this for a moment longer there we go and you can see we've got a nice blurry image now here you can do two things you can first of all spritz it a little bit further and you'll notice it's all starting to sort of bleed out a little bit more but you can also do it again with some more ink and get even more of that bleeding effect the colours I'm using are Cracked Pistachio and Dusty Concord in case you want to uh, try this combination and if you are into combinations with your Distress Inks and Oxides you can uh, follow my playlist on YouTube, I'll pop that up here um, and you can see lots and lots of different colour combinations. So I'm just going over this once more, exactly the same, water on the surface, the ink on the stamp and holding it down. Okay. There we go so we've got this lovely wicked effect now what we want to do and it's really important is not move our paper not move our stamp but allow this to dry or if you want to take your heat tool to it now let's pick out the detail of the stamp and we're going to go in with something like a versifying clair and again ensure that your cardstock your paper your watercolor paper is completely dry at this stage and that you have not moved it at all if you've accidentally moved it whilst you were drying um, reposition it before you add the ink to your stamp 
So I'm going to pop this over and because this is a watercolour cardstock, there's a lot of texture within the surface of this. So I might find that I need to reapply my ink a few times. I think I might do there actually a bit more over this side just to pick out that detail a little bit more. There we go. So now what we've got is this beautiful kind of glow, and I'll say glow around the word glow, look, of colour around each of the letters, but it is just restricted to where the lines are. And I just think it's such a lovely effect. Now notice there was obviously more water up here because that's bled out a lot more and we've just kind of got a background image. Um, but down here where maybe there was a little bit less water, it is definitely held more where the stamp was and hasn't bled any further out. So it's worth experimenting with the amount of water you use. Now I'd like to show you another technique, the same as this or similar to this. Uh, I'm going to use a different image. This time I'm going to use a stamp that has come from the Papercraft Society box. And this one was is designed by Phil Martin of uh, Sentimentally Yours. And I'm going to use this beautiful lily corner. Let's just pop that here. In fact, let's just do it in the middle. There's no reason for us to need to keep it to the bottom, bottom corner. And I'm going to do exactly the same as before. So just make sure, first of all, that my cardstock is well and truly um, stuck down, not going to move, got my stamp in place. I'm going to let some water soak into the cardstock, the watercolour paper. I'm going to use a brown ink this time. Let's just stamp all over this with, this is a vintage photo. Another light spritz over there. And let's press this down and hold it. Now again, we're not going to get the perfect image. We're going to get that slight kind of bleed line, that wicking going on, that blurriness. And this is what we're going for. So as you can see, we've got a little bit of that going on, but if you just give it a light spritz, you'll get a little bit more like so. Now that's perfect for what I want to do, I think. I'm going to just, I say that and then I spray it again. I'm going to leave this to dry by itself before I do the next stage. And this time we're not going to use black ink. So that has now completely dried. Um, it's imperative that you do have this bone dry because otherwise the next stage just will not work. I'm going to use an embossing pouch as well. So this has just got some um, anti-static powder in it. And that's just going to help dry up any last little bits of dampness that might be left there. Now, still with my stamp in the same place, I'm just going to stamp or rather add my embossing ink. This is just the clear ink all over the stamp. Now, because I can't see where I'm stamping on the image, I am going to use this ink two or three times just to ensure that I've got all that lovely detail because it is a beautiful stamp and I'd hate to miss any of the detail that's here. So go over it once or twice more. There we go. Now we can remove our stamp from our platform. And we can put some white powder over the top. So I'd say white or whatever colour matches your background cardstock or paper. So you can see there, that's a really good colour match. It's a slightly off-white. So with the watercolour paper, it's perfect. And I'm going to put that back into the tub. There we go. So now I'm just going to heat set that. And there we have that beautiful drop shadow effect underneath all the gorgeous detail. And doesn't it look stunning? It just looks as if that image is raised up and giving it lots of dimension. So if you enjoy videos like this, particularly videos using distress inks and oxides, please do subscribe to my channel. I'd love it if you could join me there and keep an eye out for lots more videos like this coming up soon.